Let me take a moment and talk about Riverside.fm. It allows you to record studio quality audio and up to 4K video. When you need to record audio and video, Riverside.fm can do it. So if you're looking for a hero platform for all your recording needs, from podcasts to webinars to any video content, Riverside.fm. I've got a promo code for you where you'll receive a 30% discount on the first three months of your subscription. I'll give it to you twice. The promo code is ship it. All one word, ship it, and you'll pick up a 30% discount on your first three months of your subscription. Riverside.fm. In this episode of the Football History Headlines on the best of the Pigskin Dispatch, we discuss Super Bowls 41 and 52 and John Madden, uh, who just recently lost uh, his life, and many more Hall of Fame legendary stories all coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your portal to positive football history. And we are here for another great day of gridiron history that we're going to share with you. Now let's get into your football history headlines. February 4th, 1969, John Madden is named the head coach of the Oakland Raiders. With the hiring of John, he was the youngest coach in the AFL. Madden remained the head man of the Raiders sidelines all the way through the conclusion of the 1978 season when they were part of the NFL. He and the Raiders won Super Bowl XI, his crowning achievement in a 10-year tenure with the silver and black. Under John Madden, the Raiders had an impressive record of 103 wins, 32 losses, and 7 ties, and they never suffered under a losing season for the Pro Football Hall of Fame under Madden's reign. The team won five straight AFC Western titles from 1972 through 1976. After hanging up the coaching whistle, Madden became an outstanding broadcast color analyst, perhaps the best the gridiron has ever seen. February 4, 1990, Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. The 1989 season's NFL Pro Bowl had the NFC defeating the AFC 27-21. The game's MVP was defensive back Jerry Gray of the Los Angeles Rams. February 4th, 1996, also at Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, the NFL Pro Bowl for the 1995 season resulted in an NFC victory over the AFC rivals by the score of 20-13. Jerry Rice, the San Francisco 49ers' great wide receiver, used his awesome receiving skills to catch the game's MVP honors. Then we talk about another NFL Pro Bowl. This one was played on February 4th, 2001, also at Aloha Stadium. And on this date in history, the contest was the AFC that extinguished the NFC 38-17. The game's MVP honors went to Rich Gannon, quarterback then of the Oakland Raiders. February 4th, 2007 at Dolphin Stadium in Miami Gardens, Miami, Florida. At Super Bowl 41, Tony Dungy and Peyton Manning had finally received their Super Bowl championships. They had been so elusive to each of them earlier in their careers. According to the Pro Football Reference, Manning threw for 247 yards passing and a touchdown against a very strong Chicago Bears defense to win the Most Valuable Player Award in the contest. The brilliant signal caller was his top-notch coach helped guide the Indianapolis Colts over the Chicago Bears 29-17. February 4th, 2018, at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Super Bowl 52 was a game that was quite surprising to most who watched it. The Philadelphia Eagles, led by their quarterback Nick Foles, who at the beginning of the season was a backup to Carson Wentz, were playing the New England Patriots, who had the great Tom Brady under center. ESPN.com tells how Foles led the Eagles on a gutsy 75-yard drive to the winning touchdown, which was an 11-yard toss to tight end Zach Ertz with 2.21 to go. The Yurt's catch added to the game's drama by having to be reviewed in the replay booth, leaving millions of viewers on the edge of their seat. After replay supported the call on the field, Philadelphia went for two, but the try failed. 
The Eagles defense would then have to go two final stands against a crafty Brady and friends to taste greatness. Yes, the Philadelphia Eagles defeated the New England Patriots 41-33 to win all the marbles. The Super Bowl 52 MVP was none other than Nick Foles. Now let's take a little bit of a break from the action. And uh, don't forget, you can reach us at pigskindispatch at gmail.com and make sure you talk to us, uh, tell us what you like about the show, what you don't, and uh, maybe have some ideas for the show or maybe some people we can interview. And speaking of interviews, uh, let's hear from something from one of my podcast partners at the Sports History Network right now who has something great to tell you. Do you wish you knew more about the 100 seasons of the NFL? You're in luck because you found the Football History Dude Podcast, where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. From the founding of the league in an auto showroom, all the way to what it is today, America's favorite sport and a behemoth of an industry. My name is Ernie Chapman. Football is my passion, and I want you to come along with me each week to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board, my DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. Hey, if you haven't heard that podcast of the Football History Dude with Arnie Chapman, you are in for a treat, and you've got to treat yourself to make sure you listen to him because he is quite masterful in his interviewing process and uh, has some very interesting guests. So make sure you check that out on the Sports History Network. Now, let's get into your birthdays for this February 4th of Hall of Famers. And February 4th, 1933, Des Moines, Iowa, the great Lincoln University of Missouri halfback, Leo Lewis was born. The National Football Foundation says Lewis also known as the Lincoln Locomotive, had some impressive stats in his four years at Lincoln University, leading the Blue Tigers to an impressive 27-5-3 record in his time on the team. Leo set records for the Blue Tigers, including 22 touchdowns in a season, 64 touchdowns in a career, and he posted 1,239 yards rushing in a season, and his career rushing yards of 4,561 to become a two-time first-team All-America selection. Leo Lewis received the honor of being forever remembered in his induction into the College Football Hall of Fame in the year 2005. February 4th, 1940, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Billy Neighbors, the powerful guard from the University of Alabama, arrived into this life. The National Football Foundation voters selected Billy Neighbors' gridiron legacy to go into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1973. And finally, February 4, 1960, Oakland, New Jersey. Widener College of Pennsylvania's great safety Tom Deary was born. The NFF states that Deary was voted as an All-America selection in three different seasons by the AP and the America Coaches Association for his brilliant defensive secondary prowess. Tom amassed 126 unassisted tackles, 44 assisted tackles, and 32 interceptions in his 43 career games he played during college. The National Football Foundation selected Tom Deary for entrance into the College Football Hall of Fame in the year 1998. We are so appreciative and thankful that you once again joined us for this uh, Football History Headlines on PigskinDispatch.com's podcast. And we hope you join us every day. And you can do that very easily by hitting the subscribe button on your podcast provider right now and uh, making sure you uh, can join us and know as soon as we're released. You can also find us on the Sports History Network, as we uh, talked about earlier, at SportsHistoryNetwork.com. And you'll see us and probably well over a dozen other podcasters on there. I think it's maybe even 15 or 16 now it's i can't keep track of what arnie's got going over there because it is a growing thing and uh, it's something you want to be a part of and if you're interested in podcasting it's a perfect opportunity if you love sports history to uh, learn the ropes from some really good uh, folks over there at the sports history network and a very supportive team so make sure you uh, look at the contact information there to join if you want to or just listen because that is such a privilege to do too some very talented individuals here or You can go to our website, pigskindispatch.com, and join us tomorrow for February 5th Football History Headlines. Until then, have a great Gridiron Day. Peeking up at the clock, the time's running down. We're going to go into victory formation, take a knee, and let this baby run out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow for the next podcast. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. 
Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order.